Hello, 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 my friends. Welcome back down the old rabbit hole. It's your host, the sedated native Icarus 4AO, and I'm back with a brand new DMT trip report for you guys. I do apologize. Uh, I meant to have this out like a week ago. However, a lot of crazy shit happened in my life, and I wasn't really emotionally ready to just jump on camera and do what I was doing. I had to step back and, you know, take everything in. Uh, nonetheless, we'll get into that a little bit later, but uh, when you're done with this video, if you guys want a little more icky content, I just uh, did an episode of a podcast called Real in the Moment uh, with uh, Kina the Queen and Ghana G. Be sure to check that out. We have a pretty dope conversation about uh, psychedelics, and they're fucking great people, and they keep them vibes pretty high. So uh, that link can be found in the first pinned comment and all that shit. Just look for it. You guys will find it. But... Here we go into our psychedelic time machine. La, 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 la. Snug DMT. Um, so yeah, man, this happened about a year ago, I want to say. Uh, give or take, I don't know. Sometime in the grand old year of 2020, right? A friend of mine, a good friend, someone who had actually been mentioned in one of my trip reports. I guess that's a puzzle piece for you guys. Um, had sent me a bunch of really cool stuff and among that stuff was uh, two vials of DMT right so I had taken one vial and I just started giving it away to people just people who would I would come in contact with who have been like I've never smoked DMT oh, man I like would love to try it. I'd be like yeah man let me help you out with that you right I was just dosing the world bro but there was this one vial that the the DMT that I was like, yeah, that's for, uh, that's for Uncle Icky, baby. You know what I mean? So uh, I lived off this walking path, right? Uh, long ass biking trail and shit, super naturey, as naturey as you could get in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, big ass trees and shit, washes, all that cool stuff. So I was walking down there and I had the intention to smoke DMT. I was like, I'm going to go hide in these trees. And I'm gonna smoke this shit, right? So I'd taken a pipe down there and used the sandwich method, of course, the weed, DMT weed, you know, a little cherry on top. And yeah. So I sit down in this shrubbery, I guess, right? Now, this is again along a very popular walking and biking path, but I'm completely hidden, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm the crown jewel in this in this ecosystem of green. And uh I sit down, you know, just try to kind of center myself and uh, prepare for a liftoff. So I started listening to No Turn Unstoned by Spongle, one of my favorite Spongle songs. And uh, I began to hit the DMT. I take one big fucking rip. You know, I hold it in, I feel my skin start to crawl, the wheel starts spinning, 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 right? That sound is filling my ears. You know, everything becomes a lot more vibrant and alive. I take another really big hit of DMT and i close my eyes and feel that i start slipping into this state of you know anesthesia you know i feel myself starting to drift off you know everything behind my eyes is starting con to connect like a wonderful spider web and as i feel myself getting pulled closer and closer to the void for some reason it feels like i start falling back like it's i'm not going to break through this time around so i was like in my head saying i'm almost there just one more hit so i open my eyes to look for the pipe and the lighter that i've some you know placed somewhere besides me and beside me excuse me and i'm just blown away by the ground 
because I'm sitting on like in dirt and shit. There's twigs and grass everywhere, but everything, man, is connected, bro. And I'm just like, holy shit, everything's triangular. You know what I'm saying? And like, holy fuck. And as I'm like taking this in, I start to look in front of me and sitting in front of me is Buddha. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this anything else, anything other than the Buddha was sitting in front of me. I'm not talking like the big ass fat Buddha with the big, you know, the Buddha with the big ass belly that you see inside Chinese restaurants and you put coins on him. I'm talking about that like beaded head Buddha. I'm, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? But literally sitting in like a lotus position holding some object that I want to say maybe was like a flower or something. And I'm looking at this and I'm just in such astonishment of what's happening in front of me. Like, I can't believe I'm seeing this, right? Rem look, thinking back to when this was happening, it was as if om almost as if everything behind it was blurry. And it was just this being who closely resembled Buddha was sitting in front of me. And I was like, there's no way this is fucking happening. I want to touch it. <laughs> so I reached my hand out to touch the Buddha. And literally as I did, when I went to like go forward to touch it, I fell forward into it. And when I, what I mean by fall forward into it, like I fell into it. Like the Buddha was the opening to the rabbit hole. Literally, I went, and I felt like I started just flipping and doing somersaults violently as if I was going down a hill, sitting inside of a giant truck tire. I'm just like, Aah. everything is white, except these hands. So I, it feels like I'm falling, right, and just doing these spins and like somersaults, but it looks like I'm floating over this giant ocean of hands and they're all like doing the wave and there's like all these like fingers and shit and i'm floating over it still like doing these flips and then i fall into this sea of phalanges and now i'm just like literally like this is my point of view it's literally just going through these corridors of consciousness. I literally felt like I was stuck inside of a Windows 98 computer screensaver or something. I just kept going through this Taj Mahal of mandalic geometric patterns. And I'm going through dimensions upon dimensions upon dimensions. Like, hey, what's up, Icarus is here, what's up, bro? No, but it's very intense as this is happening. I enter this one room, right? Now, if you want to call it a room, the walls, if such they be, are crawling with geometric hallucination. Um, I enter this room with like what I want to say or just can only describe as some type of podium. There's this center console where all these like geometric patterns are lining up to kind of like Rainbow Road in Super Mario Kart, right? flashing unimaginable colors everything is going to it, almost like a like a motherboard or something like i'm sitting in the central nervous system of the universe's consciousness and i can see in like sitting on this podium if that's a thing in this dimension is this entity that kind of looks like if you think of like a think of your stereotypical alien head you know what i mean the fucking oval head it was like that except the whole fucking his whole head was its whole head was oval and it was the head was spinning right and but its face would stay the same so his head was spinning eyes are staying there and it has all these like it almost looks like a squid like it has all these arms or tentacles or something just kind of floating around like if you think of the spangle face you know how it has the like that shit kind of like that but surrounding its entire body and it's doing so there's all these lines of energy right flashing going towards it and every now and then one of its arms or whatever would grab what like connect to these lines of energy and i'm not sure what it's doing but i'm just witnessing this all in front of me and 
It then begins to take notice of me, so it seems, because its face becomes extremely close to mine. And then it just envelops me. Envelops me into this other place where it's now like kind of like a kaleidoscope, but all along these kaleidoscopes are, or like all along the like turning of this place, looks like these tiny like elven things all holding hands and jolly, right? It's literally looking like I'm through a kaleidoscope. I then come back, right? I'm open, like this kaleidoscope then just starts to fade into like reality. Bright as hell, bright light. And then all of a sudden I start to see trees and they all look like digital, like they were digitally created in front of me. And I sit up, the Buddha is gone. Right. And I'm trying to get a grip of everything that's going on while still being conscious of the fact that I'm in public and I am now shirtless. I don't know how I became shirtless. I don't know if in the middle of this DM teacher was just like, fuck clothes or something. But yeah, that's what basically I did. And my shirt is sitting in front of me. I grab it and I'm like, I can hear people walking by like, <laughs> Margaret and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, fuck, I shouldn't have done this here. I shouldn't have done this here. Just like, calm down, man. Calm down. It's all good. And then I put my shirt back on. I sit down. And I'm trying to, like, remember everything that happened. And it was just more, I did, there was really no message into this experience, I want to say. I didn't download any specific message because the whole thing was just a giant mind fuck. But the period of time in which I did uh, the DMT or had this experience, you know, I was using psychedelics in a really wrong state of mind or like I was doing, I wasn't looking for a message deep down inside. I was looking for fun and, you know, I was an alcoholic and just trying to party and shit. So that message I don't think could break through to me, you know. Doing psychedelics without an intention is like building or is like buying a teddy bear with no stuffing. You know what I mean? Like it's just kind of worthless. And uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see what you guys think about that because it was fucking weird. <laughs> but I'm definitely, you know, baby stepping my way back to the grand old sacred spirit molecule to dive deep with this new headspace I have. Whenever that day may come, hell yeah, but we'll let fate decide that one. But uh, yeah, man, a quick, short, and easy one. Again, sorry for uh, the lag on this video, but uh, I want to just take this time really quick to... Uh... Fuck, I promised I wouldn't get emotional. I want to say rest in peace to a very good homie of mine by the name of Tyler, who unfortunately lost his life uh, about a week and a half ago. He has been uh, in a lot of my trip reports. You guys might famously remember the one where he's like, you want some ketamine? But I just want to say that this man took life by the balls and he made it his own and he was a family man a hundred percent all the way to the fucking end and, and his family didn't just extend to blood if he looked at you as a brother he fucking treated you like one and he made sure that you were fucking taken care of he opened the minds of so many fucking people and he fucking gave me so many endless memories of laughter and just i just want to let his name be known and yeah Tyler you crazy motherfucker I love you so goddamn much bro and I want you to tell Meech I said what's up tell Miley, Smiley I said what up and take care of yourself out there buddy because when I go Whenever that day may be, I'm giving you a big old hug, dude. So this one, buddy, this one's for you. Peace, love, and rest in peace. 
And for the rest of you motherfuckers, smoke DMT.